In this video, we'll work through a real-world example of how a worn-out motorcycle chain behaves on an old Vulcan. We'll go through an honest and unsponsored demonstration and review of the Motion Pro PBR tool to break the old and rivet the new chain, and we'll discuss standard guidelines for motorcycle chain maintenance. Okay, now watch this. I've got the uh, chain uh, too tight in this area here. See how it's got very little play? Too tight, but just watch what happens when I rotate the wheel. I'm in neutral and the rear wheel's off the ground. And watch what happens when I rotate it a little ways. All of a sudden, our chain is too loose. So it depends on the rotation as to where we are with the chain as to whether it's tight enough or not. Obviously makes it really difficult to um, adjust for chain length. This chain needs to come off, it's dangerous. <laughs> With my assistant, just one six millimeter bolt, and then this cover comes off. This is a 27 millimeter nut, and there's a washer that's folded over. And we need to fold that back so we can get the nut off. So to undo that uh, nut to prevent the bike from lurching backwards, I've got a giant screwdriver holding the brake down. Um, probably would, would have been easier just to have a friend do it for you. Let's see how easy this comes off. Pretty simple. This is not, it's got a dish shape, so remember which way it goes on. I'm just going to leave it partially on while I put the bike up on the stand. Look at all the junk here. This is the price you pay from using paraffin wax rather than chain oil. I really like wax in general, but it is pretty messy. Always good to store the bolts where you won't lose them. If you scan the net for motorcycle chain tool reviews, you'll find all kinds of complaints about pins in the tools being too flimsy and bending. I think most of those complaints can be traced back to bad technique. Even a discount tool is likely to perform well if used correctly. Regardless of what tool you use, it is always wise to give yourself every chance to succeed. The best way to start is to take one minute to grind off the two outside rivet heads. I'm going to hold it on this side and take it off the other way. This is 22 millimeter on this side. Next we need to loosen these uh, two nuts off. The other one is 12. Looks like that's coming off together. The um, inner one is 14. I'll just do this. Okay, so let me show you this tool. This is the PBR tool. Press, break, and then rivet. And we're going to break it first. We're going to break the chain. So we put the B against the break and then just slide that baby in there. This thing is called the anvil, this little cube. And there's a pin inside there. You see that pin? And then this part is called the bolt. And so we're going to um, put the little rivet in behind and hold it steady. Line up this pin here. Uh, we're going to square up this bolt and then press it out. Okay, I've done the one side, so now I'll do the other. I forgot to turn the camera on. It's always nice to have a do-over. There. So we're on the rivet on the back, and I'll just move the pin forward a little bit, get myself centered, and then you want the bolt to be holding the... That looks like it's about right there. Water in. 
angle so you can see what I'm doing. Suddenly it gets easier when you go through. There, that's all we need. And we'll back it off. Okay, I've lowered the uh, lift to get the tire back on the ground so I can roll the tire back out. There we go. So if you <clears throat> saw the uh, tire removal uh, video I did, I need to get this one off. And then uh, there's a cotter pee and I need to undo this one as well. I'll do the, both those now off camera. Okay, don't forget the speedometer cable. This is a four millimeter hex. Okay, I'll take it right out. And the speedo cable should just pull out of there. There we are. All right, let's get the old sprocket off. And here's our replacement, in case anybody wants part numbers. This thing has a symmetry to it. You want the numbers to be um, up in this situation. And I'm going to put a drop of Loctite on each of these threads, just so they don't come undone. The torque spec here is 54 foot-pounds. I showed this earlier, but there's a high point inside this um, brake assembly, and you need that high point to um, line up with these notches here. I can see it right there. And here's my replacement. That's the part number if you're interested. Just cleaned up pretty well. I'm putting the numbers out. Not sure that makes a difference. We'll do the final torquing once I get the chain on. So good luck. It looks like my chain is perfect length, so I don't need to cut it down. It says here, do not eat chain grease. Oh my gosh. I've been doing it wrong the whole time. Who knew? Okay. Comes with its own grease pack. And then four O-rings. Let's go put it on the bike. I'll just show you this here because it'll be harder to show you later. We're going to use the press feature. Now in contrast with brake and rivet where the anvil is down below here, with the press the anvil is up high which is why we've got it like this. So this, where are we at here? Press it goes like that so that round circle goes into there. In the PBR tool we're using today, notice that the vulnerable pin is only engaged during the break phase of removing the old chain. The pin is safely retracted during the rivet and the press stage for this style of chain. Okay, I think I've got it. I'm just going to get it started here.
bit and then tighten again. Back off a bit. Just make sure that I'm going in the right direction. perfectly lined up. Okay, I've gone very slowly with this part here because I don't want to overshoot. I think I'm just about perfect here. We're about a half a millimeter proud of the end. You see that? And we've still got good movement and my o-rings don't seem to be overly stressed. So I think at this point let's move over to the rivet phase. Okay, so for the rivet phase we turn the anvil so the R is beside rivet. You can see what it look, the base looks like there. And then we move to this little uh, rounded thing uh, because I've got a little dimple in my end piece. And I put a little dab of grease on there just to make it go smooth. Um, I must say I'm am amazed at how well this is engineered. There's a little magnet in this thing that holds it steady. So let's go put it on. Okay, before we start the rivet phase, let's measure. Five point two millimeters, and then the rivets on the normal chain about five point four six. Five point six four. Five point five eight. And then the one we're doing is five point two. So if I can get to up to about five point five, I'll be doing good. like it's about right. I'll make sure I'm dead center on that rivet. Okay, let's back off and see where we're at. Last reading was 5.46. I want to go just a bit more. All right, we'll try that. Still freely mobile. Five point six two, perfect. All right, let's do the other one. This front one gets torqued to ninety four foot pounds. Got to be careful because it'll push the bike backwards. I've got the brake applied. There we are. Okay, let's move on to uh, chain slack. It's a little easier to do this with the lift out of the way because I can find the midpoint more easily. Uh, two schools of thought here. Um, the first is that you should push down on the chain to uh, get the zero point, and then others, um, the racers amongst us, just tend to use the catenary weight of the lower chain. One thing is for sure, everybody agrees that the top chain needs to be taut. In any case, my baseline here, I've got about 8.7 and 6.9, so what's that? Uh, 18 millimeters, so I, my chain's a little tight here, so I'm gonna have to loosen it off. I'd be interested to know what others do in this situation. Do you push down on the chain to get the zero rating, or do you just rely on the weight of the chain to give you that zero? Okay, so I'm gonna use this chain alignment tool just to make sure my chain is lined up properly um, between the wheel and the front sprocket. Let me tighten this down here. This is the first time I've used it. The uh, first thing I did is I checked the alignment with itself because these kind of tools are like squares. They have to be exactly on. And I had some doubts about that, but in any case, here we are. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to line up. The chain is uh, set up parallel to the plane of the uh, rear sprocket. And we just want to make sure that the front sprocket is in line with that same plane so the chain is not uh, twisting sideways. And I think I've got it pretty good right there. Slight adjustments in the uh, adjustment wheel make a big difference. 
to my surprise, there is a difference compared to the traditional way of doing this. Now using that chain alignment tool, I've got a little bit of a surprise here. Uh, normally I've been using these marks on either side of the frame to make sure that my uh, wheel is adjusted properly. And we're about 2.6 here measured from this left hand end. But interestingly enough, over on the other side, we're at about 2.9 from this right side, which is quite a difference. It raises the question as to whether my tool is accurate enough to make that call or whether I'm better off relying on these notches. I'm going to rely on the tool. Well, one thing about these Vulcans that I didn't realize, in the dealer's manual they describe a special procedure to try and prevent a spongy rear brake pedal. And it's as follows. You put the wheel on and you lightly tighten the axle nut. And then you um, tighten the torque link bolts down here. And then you apply the rear brake to center the uh, shoes in the drum. And then finally you do the final torquing of the axle nut. This gets torqued to 72 foot-pounds. This is ADW 90 gear oil. I decided to look at this chain a little more closely because of the dramatic difference in chain tightness depending on rotation. And the way you measure these, um, you make a mark, and you call that link number one, or rivet number one, and then you make a second mark, and that's rivet number 21. And the distance between one and 21 is exactly 20 links, and that's what we're seeing there. Now, that distance can't be anything more than 323 millimeters, and I did that five times, and I got the biggest I got was 324, smallest was 320, so I didn't see as dramatic a difference as I would have expected. That said, I did see pretty significant evidence of chain wear. Not only is there rust, but there actually are O-rings that are missing. This one right here is missing an O-ring. There's about a half a dozen like that. There's no O-ring there. Can you see that? The o-ring has completely fallen off. Okay, that washboard sound is gone and the problem is solved. So what do I think of this PBR tool? Well, I think it's outstanding. The only issue, of course, is cost. There are a lot of cheaper options. And in fact, there are experienced techs out there who are able to do this kind of job on a bench without any special tools. That said, uh, there's no doubt that this tool is quicker and easier and more reliable. I look at tools as being an investment, and this tool will last for a lifetime. And so, from my perspective, getting something on the higher end is well worth it. Thanks for watching.